See the rig, Michael? I mean, Mike, I feel bad for the 7.3, she's home. Like, why don't, you, why don't you want to take me? We need the creature comforts, Mike. All right, so we've got the G80 inside, my F80 inside on top, because the G80 is that much bigger, it wouldn't fit on top. Did, did Matt tell you about that? Oh, man. Yeah, we put it on top originally, and it wouldn't fit. Oh, it's that much longer. So anyway, the heavier car should be on the bottom anyway, and it's like 400 pounds heavier. So anyway, G80's bottom, F80's on top. We've got our stacker, and then I had to buy a new, so the receiver on this truck's two and a half or three, the old truck was two inch, so I had to buy the new, um, I guess you call that the, the hitch part, right? The receiver's the truck. So anyway, I bought a two and a half inch. We got her preloaded to, it was, tongue weight's like 1500. I preloaded this to 3100, which is what the app tells me to do. So anyway, it's a, it, it tows nicely. It tows, and the built-in brake controller is sweet. It stops really well. It's got plenty of power. This looks proper. The, the 10-speed transmission makes a big difference, I will say that. I have to tow in the, with the old truck, and I only have three speeds because I tow out of overdrive. So it's first, second, third, that's it. This is, this locks out. I think I'm in tow haul mode, so I think it locks out nine and 10. But it was towing an eighth, it's fine, so. And it's all paint corrected. I'm gonna get it PPF'd while it's up there and then uh, bring it home and ceramic coat it. PPF's going on the whole front clip and I think maybe the lower sections of the bed and I think I wanna do the, the uh, wheel arch flare or whatever on the back. It's a proper truck. And if we get stuck, we got the winch to pull us out, Mike. Yeah. We got the, as Matt calls it, the PPN. Purple pig nose, and then we have the the better M3 up there, the F80. How did they look next to each other? My car looks better. Yeah. I like this color though. No, this this car is cool. Check the violet. It's beautiful. It's, nice. it, it's pretty. No, it's a cool car. It's a cool car. It would be a cool car to have as well as the F80, okay. like for a highway cruiser. Yeah. You know, if you're like an M3, you got to have all the M3s. That's the ultimate highway cruiser as far as M3s go. We're going to Auto Paint Guard in Tampa. Um, Ryan's place. He's going to PPF the G80 and he's going to do my truck. So I'm excited to get done because I've been following like half a mile back everybody yeah. trying to get it. I had so far 2,000 miles, no rock chips. So cross fingers, I don't get any on the way to Tampa. So I spent, I was up late last night trying to finish getting all the paint correcting done. That was kind of a long intro, Mike. Yeah, that was a lot. You know, you, you can cut that down, Mike. Yeah. You know, you, you can edit, you know? Yeah. That's the beauty of that. So we're heading to Auto Paint Guard. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, that's a shorter version, Mike. <laughs> it's got everything for trailer, like all my stuff's right here. So it's telling me my brake gain. So as I hit the brakes harder, like you can see the brake gain goes up tells you your grade if you're towing up a hill. Um, what else? What else is there? Wireless car play, you got yeah, it's got all that. It's got air conditioned seats, heated seats, the panoramic sunroof, you know, for if you want to get your suntan. All right, Mike, we do a Starbucks run? We got it, Michael. I haven't eaten anything. I've been up since 4.30. I'm hungry. Where are we parking this trailer, Mike? I'll just pull it in the drive through Oh, yeah? No, I'm going to pull it in that parking lot right there. Don't you worry, Mike. I've done this before with this exact trailer. You, you've done Not some a problem. Starbucks runs with just cinnamon. once. Just once here. I had to get some. There's a shame there's no cinnamon rolls. Oh my gosh. They used to have really good ones. Morning buns, they used to call them. They used to squirt the caramel on top of that morning bun. That was excellent. Excellent. And then they changed the recipe and they put some kind of orange zest in it and it ruined it. It's a sporty trailer. It's a sporty version, Mike. Yeah. The problem with the the big uh, 40 foot non stackers is you can't do this with them. Yeah. You can't pull into a parking lot like this. Yeah. Not in a little like strip mall parking lot. There's no way. We should. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna vlog, Mike. Yeah, okay, we'll vlog. Yeah, it's pretty sick. I'm sure it looks cool going down the highway. 
No, Matt would not approve of this. Well, he does like his, uh, what are they called, spindrift? He likes those grapefruit spindrifts. This is the, yeah, while you're in line. Done. Order done. Look at that. See you soon while I'm already here. Where's my stuff? Oh, man. <laughs> I got some polish on my tire, Mike. I must have dripped some polish. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Here's your Starbucks, Mike. So if anybody wants to know, go see Ryan Auto Paint Guard, 14309A, North Nebraska Avenue, Tampa, Florida. Got that, Mike? Got it, Mike. All right, there you go. And look at that. Get there right at 1015, perfect. Made it, Mike. So I put the wood block under to get a little extra angle on it without having to, without having to extend the cylinder all the way. That's right about there, yeah, that's it. So then we just need the ramps. Leaving it here, buddy. Looks pretty good in the sun, huh? Ryan with Auto Paint Guard. Uh, here we're gonna be doing the uh, mats new M3, which is outside in the wash bay. And right now we're trying to cut out all these kits. Um, this is the actual bumper kit right here. I'm sorry, we're not gonna be doing all those. <laughs> that would take three days. I give props to anyone that can do all that. <laughs> oh, he's getting rid of that grill anyway. Oh, is he? Oh, perfect, that's gonna work out great. <laughs> so right now we're gonna be uh, modifying you know, the kit, so. Um, I'll just go ahead and delete all these. So we're using uh, 8 mil XPEL Ultimate Plus. Um, it's their, I guess there's upgraded film. Um, they do have a couple others like 10 mil and they have uh, their new film is XPEL Ultimate Plus with like a fusion built into it. But we're just gonna do the standard Ultimate Plus so we can add a ceramic coating to the top of it. But right here you can see like this is the XPEL database and we can modify these patterns. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the, the hole there so we can take the emblem off and then wrap underneath it. These are the sensors, we'll go ahead and delete those. And then the same with the reflectors, we'll just delete all this stuff. All right, so we got the bumper laid out to where, how we want to cut it. We wrapped the top edge, wrapped the side edge. Um, now we got to choose the roll, the size of the roll to cut this bumper out. So this is where we come over here and grab the 36 inch roll, drop it. <laughs> Right now I'm just uh, aligning up the roll to where it, you know, it cuts straight. Right now I'm feeding out the roll just to make sure that this sheet of film is rolling straight. And this little blade right here is gonna plot out the kit on the paper or the film. And then there's a little blade right there. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what actually cuts the film. Mm 
All right, now that we're rolling straight, over here, over here and hit plot. There's some uh, installers out there that would bulk all of this, put a sheet up there and trace it all out. That's, uh, I don't even know how you have patience for that. <laughs> it's like doing all those little grill pieces. That's, that's yeah. Now we like the hood will bulk, but that's, you know, one panel and that's yeah, not, you know. Relatively smooth. Right. All right. The kit has been plot, plotted, I guess, as you would say. Now the goal is to get all the excess uh, film off so you can actually see the template. So we use a lot of the reflections from the light above to see where all the edges are. And then we just carefully weed, weed off all of the, the excess film. All right, and that's the kit. Right now I'm just chopping off all the, uh, some of the excess so I can back roll the film on easier. This isn't easy, this is, this is not really hard, it's just very time consuming. But you know, it's, it's hard in a way to where you, everything has to be aligned properly. All right, so uh, cutting out the rockers. Um, well, that was a bumper. Let's do the hood and fenders. And luckily, a lot of these patterns we have saved. So this is the fender and the mirror kit. Uh, the hood that we will we'll use bulk. This is only like three months old. No, this is like three years old. No, I bought a new one this year. I bought it at the beginning of the year. What month is this? This is good, right? Can you guys hook us up on a new hose? That'll be six thousand dollars. Yeah. Actually, actually, so I bought the nice pressure washer that you guys, you know, and then Billy took it. Yeah. We need we need the the commercial grade that's gonna. Take the, you know, take the paint off. Uh, right now, it's I guess you guys polished it and prepped it for us. Uh, but since it's been on the transporter, uh, right now we're just knocking off all the dust. We're going to rewash it just to get make sure all the dust, dirt, fibers are out of all the cracks and crevices. So hopefully it helps us with a, a cleaner install. So right now we're just going to rinse it off and then we're going to foam cannon it, gently wash it, rinse it back off pull it in our bay, dry it off, <laughs> so we can start working. <laughs> all the water and I think we're gonna start with the uh, roof first just to get that out of the way we use just regular Johnson's baby shampoo for the slip solution and then we use a mixture of uh, rubbing alcohol and water for the tack solution um, you know all the waters are a little bit different but we find that just regular city water works great for the the slip solution and then we use RO water for the tack solution 
right now I'm just uh, inspecting it for any kind of you know dirt in the paint imperfections just making mental notes of what the condition of the the panel is oh we got PPF this that'll be fun we used to the original model X's would come uh, painted back the seats so we would have to cover those all the time We generally always uh, back roll our kits on. So right now I'm just kind of getting the front foot or so wet so it'd be easier to, to back roll. Here goes nothing. That worked well for once. <laughs> Are you like an eighth, eighth of an inch away or, yeah? Right now we're just looking for dirt and any kind of microfibers or stretch marks, grab marks. So as you're squeegeeing, you're kind of like praying for no dirt. <laughs> it's like right here, this is a small one. I don't know if you can see it, but very tiny. So we would go for that. Notice, but there's water on top of the rail too, right? Yeah, I saw it. There we go. So that guy is, uh, just bought that car and he lives in uh, Virginia. So we're doing a full PPF and then uh, ceramic coating and they're gonna ship it back to him. Eh, generally 20 minute install and then you let the edges dry. Then you'll spend 10, 20 minutes wrapping the edges and then fine tune any kind of like small little bubbles and. So overall, probably actual time install. By the time you're prepping it, installing it, going over it, maybe an hour. But that could go south real quick too, you know. You could find a blemish like the one we did at uh, the garage. There was a big blemish in the middle, so you rip it off, restart it. Usually, it, it, you get done with the install, then you find the blemish. <laughs> prepping the edges with, uh, we just use straight rubbing alcohol. Making sure there's no wax or compounds or any kind of oils on the edges. See how different lights? I mean, you guys know all about lights, but you know, I clean that edge and still some stuff there. We always spray a little uh, ceramic boost on bigger panels like this just to help with the install. When you have to go for dirt, the film pops up easier, and then four or five years down the road when you want to remove it, um, helps with the removal process as well. Yeah, so this is a, a bulk install. Um, on a panel like this, it's, it's easier versus like a pre-cut kit.
Are you overhanging? Mm-hmm. All right, now I am. So we, we always do our little process of prepping. Um, put the film down and then all the exposed paint you would uh, polish and yeah. then ceramic coat everything. But some customers want the whole thing polished prior. And let's see how I was picking it up and it was just like super st you know stuck. Whereas if it releases easier, less likely for lines and grab marks. And yeah. Have you guys named this car? Yeah. Oh yeah? yeah. What is it? Purple pig nose. Hashtag purple pig nose, remember it. Yeah. Kind of fits our line of. Yep, yep, right now I'm just uh, cleaning the edges, make sure there isn't any again, wax or compound or anything that would cause the film not to stick. I'm just trying to get it aligned. All these kits are generally, you know, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. So if you line it up correctly, it all should fit perfect. Try to get the edge to be about 0.3 of an inch in wrap. Versus if it's too much, you get too much of fingering and you get dirt that builds up in there, so you try to make it as flush as possible. This is where the magic is. Yeah. Hey Scott, yes, sir. say hi to the camera. Hi. He tinted, hi. He's the one that tinted the car. Yeah. Xbell Prime Plus. What'd you use? Um, we did 30% on the sides and back, and then 70 on the windshield. Nice. Yeah. We had to put him on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that could be quickly ruined when you do like a final wipe down. You're like, oh, look at that big hair. <laughs> like small little, small little bubbles like that will. Probably in about a day will dissipate to nothing. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. I do like the new emblem look. It's nice. It won't break, dude. They don't even have things in it. It's just literally tape. Yeah, I was just breaking the tape loose. I was trying not to scratch it. <laughs> This bumper just takes a while all together. Yeah, on this one, middle, work your way out. It is easier if you leave like the uh, camera hole cut out and the uh, emblem hole so it's a better alignment point. But then you have edges around it. I 
I swear it's normally easier than this. See how it's so like intricate, like every edge has to be lined up perfectly in order for a finger not to be here or, you know, it's, or it could be short here. It's just all got to line up perfectly in order to work. And something's drying over there. And <laughs> yeah, so this uh, looks like there's a kit that seams in together right here. A lot of pieces to this puzzle. Work in sections, like this area. Wipe it down after you get done installing it. Make sure there's, like again, no dirt or dust or stretch marks or any kind of a imperfection that you can see. And I'll wrap all these edges later after I get done with the other side. Usually when you hear that squeaking is when you're not, you're cutting it just perfect enough to where you're not cutting the paint. <laughs> Squeak is good. I'd say like a typical average full front. Like I did a Ferrari 812 yesterday, full front. It takes about four hours by the time you wash it, prep it, and dry it. This car with all the pieces, probably six to seven hours, assuming everything goes well. It really depends on you know, how much dirt you're chasing. And <laughs> but Is white the hardest of all? Yeah, just because you'll see like little lint from possible towels and whereas like a color like this, you know, small little things you're not going to see as much. You know? But you see stretch marks and grab marks and so stuff like that, but it's easy to fix once you know what you're doing. I always prefer, obviously silver is like the best color. <laughs> yeah, for any <laughs> Yeah, right. But I prefer like a color like this or like a, any kind of metallic paint. Really good for paint protection film. Because even the films aren't 100% perfect. I mean, they all have little film blemishes here and there. And, you know. Little trick that our buddy showed us at Expel. <laughs> Saying wrap that edge. Is it a heat? Yeah, it's just you're just flashing it. I mean, a heat gun would do a similar thing as well. A lot of times when you wrap these edges and it's inside an AC, you know, it's 72 in here all the time, so when you get outside, uh, the heat will make it soft and let go, whereas if you already heat it up prior, then it'll lay down easier and grip better. All right, so it's, we're pretty much done for today. Um, we did the full front, lights, all the trim work pieces, full hood, full fenders. Uh, tomorrow, we're actually gonna do the mirrors. Uh, we're gonna wrap up the, the roof. Jonathan here is doing the lower rockers, the lower doors. And then we're on the rear fender right here. We're putting a bigger factory piece on that actually wraps the edges. Uh, and Taylor's wrapping up the rear bumper right now. Um, so tomorrow is gonna be like kind of like fine tuning day to make sure there's no bubbles or any kind of edges that are popping up. Um, so we're gonna tighten it up tomorrow and get it ready for to, to go back to OG. So.